Hello guys. I'm sure most of you already heard about the True SDX or Micro SDX transceiver. But do you know that the technique of the power amplifier is something completely unique? I at least never heard of it and it drops the power consumption to never seen levels. Even compared with my Lab 599TX500 who is or was on top of that game. But more about it later. In the end of 2018, Guido Papa Echo 1 November November Zulu was playing around with a CW QCX transceiver from QRPlabs.com. No one really understands how, but he could manage to implement SSB capability into the device. The discussion from that time is still online on the QRP Labs forum. He uploaded his firmware to GitHub, and I guess that's when suddenly Chinese clones appear in the internet. He came then in contact with Manuel, Delta Lima 2, Mike Alpha November, and they started together to develop, inspired from the QCX, the True SDX. If you want one, look at the website of dl2man.de, where you can find all kinds of information, where to buy, how to assemble, and so on. I ordered a kit for about 85 euro at newdiytech.com and I will tell you in this video why I think this could be a game changer for MCOM communications, especially digital modes like GS8 call. I made some research because I was so stunned how the hell this could be even possible. There are so less parts on this transceiver and when I looked at the used microcontroller, an Atmel Atmega 328P. I was in shock. This is an 8-bit microcontroller, maximum 20 MHz clock speed with 30 KB flash memory from the Stone Age. Some time ago I was a lot into microcontrollers myself and developed some stuff. Unfortunately forgot nearly everything, but this is very impressive. There is a built-in CW decoder and in the newest beta firmware even a small spectrum display. Holy moly, this is insane. The kit itself, you can build in a few hours. It consists of two boards, the upper main boards with the microcontroller and the lower board with the power MOSFETs and filters. If you have some knitting experience, that would help a lot because the most work is winding the ferrite rings for the filters. After building it, you need to fine tune the frequency of the device. It's usually off a bit. You can further improve it by fine-tuning the filters to get some more power and better filtering. Delta Lima 2 Mike uh, Alpha November made a video about how to do this. Don't expect too much for voice communication. The quality is really bad. It's cracking and a bit strange sounding, distortion all over this place. But you can hear the words. The audio quality you cannot compare with a rig like a Lab 599TX500. To give you a more clear picture, I recorded with a high quality microphone and preamp a voice sample in my sound studio and fed that recording directly to the True SDX instead of using the tiny built microphone. Then I did the same with the TX500. What you hear is the audio received with an ICOM 7300 at the headphone port recorded. The True SDX is a 5-band multi-mode QRP transceiver in pocket format. The True SDX is a 5-band multi-mode QRP transceiver in pocket format. Nothing to sugarcoat here, the TX500 is on another level. But, but now, look at the power consumption of both rigs during transmitting about 3 watts RF power. It needs only, in my measurements 5.8 watts. If I make the same test with the TX500, also 3 watts RF power, it needs 17.4 watts. The true SDX needs about a third of the TX500. My measurements were not really precise. In fact, the efficiency should be about 80% for the true SDX. Unbelievable. I looked even with a small infrared camera to see some temperature numbers. Looking also awesome. The MOSFETs not even reached 50 degrees Celsius. 
during a 10 minute long sine wave transmission. So how does the true SDX perform with digital modes like GS8 Core, where all the information is only in, in the change of frequency and nothing in the amplitude? I did a quick check to see at which frequency the distortion kicks in for the true SDX. It starts at 2300 Hz. Everything above that, I'm not sure if it is usable in GS8 core. So to test this in the field, I had it last time with me and I compared it also with the TX500. The TX500 I uh, used first time my built-in Raspberry Pi in, on the left side below the speaker. It was working great. And the results for the true SDX also amazing. So now with the true SDX guys, completely freestyle today. I just soldiered uh, two connectors. Here's my Raspberry Pi with GS8 core. 40 meters. Uh, wait, I will show you when I switch to CW power. 4.5 watt. SWR even he's measuring. 1.6 he's showing me. I dropped it a little bit. The power, uh, yeah. And the values are nearly identical to the TX500, what I get back. This is working unbelievable, in my opinion. This device, guys, is for the emergency. It's transmitting, as we already transmitted. And here comes the signal from, from my home station. what you get back here plus 16 plus 5 there is nearly no difference from the signal strength it's unbelievable so overall I'm deeply impressed by that little device there was a live stream a year ago at Manuel's YouTube page with Guido and Manuel and they said they want to keep it simple, small and cheap because there are already more expensive and capable radios out there. I think they are wrong. There is nothing out there with that kind of power consumption. If you can improve a bit the audio quality, make it more robust and sturdy. And for guys like me who want to add stuff, add an interface to connect with a simple connector, audio in, out, cut control, power, that would be it. I guess my new favorite MCOM device. Thanks for watching.